With tertiary endosymbiosis, we have the strange situation where a prokaryotic cell lives inside of a eukaryotic cell, which lives inside of another eukaryotic cell, which lives inside yet another eukaryotic cell. Now, the eukaryotic cells in the middle often are degenerated uh, so that they have lost uh, their nuclei, for example, their, their uh, cell nucleus. Uh, and as a consequence, it's not really uh, these four different cells living together, but nevertheless, their origin is one in which uh, there are all of these four cells playing a role. So the original acquisition of a plastid gives rise to a primary endosymbiosis. Uh, this is actually a part of a serial endosymbiosis since being a eukaryotic cell, the acquirer of the plastid already has a mitochondrion. This product of primary endosymbiosis, a red or a green algae, then can be acquired by a second eukaryotic cell as a plastid unto itself. And following this acquisition, there can be a loss of the nuclear genome of the plastid, uh, and then the resulting product of secondary endosymbiosis, the prokaryotic cell surrounded by what the remnants of a eukaryotic cell surrounded by a larger cell, the eukaryotic cell, uh, itself can then serve as a plastid for a eukaryotic cell. Uh, and thus we have a situation where we have a plastid uh, that is part of a eukaryotic cell uh, that in turn is part of a eukaryotic cell serving as the plastid of the larger cell, which in turn serves as the plastid of the larger cell. But the nucleus, especially of this individual, typically will degrade to the point where it no longer exists.